Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about determinants of health and disease. We will talk about the classification as well as the inequalities in health. What is a determinant of health? Health and disease are influenced by a multitude of factors that are known as determinants of health. These determinants can be classified into four main categories. The biological and genetic factors, the lifestyle factors, the environmental factors, and the healthcare services. The first determinant of health is the biological determinant. Biological determinants of health include genetics, age, and sex. I want to make a short excursion into the definition of gender and sex. In medical terms, we refer to sex as being male and female, depending on the biologically given chromosomal arrangement, while the gender, divided into feminine and masculine, is socially acquired. Also important to mention is that the biologically given sex determines the risk for the development of breast or prostate cancer. Gender differences are also the way that certain diseases present. For example, women may experience atypical symptoms of heart disease, such as shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, while men are more likely to experience chest pain or discomfort. Women may also have smaller coronary arteries, which can make it more difficult to diagnose heart disease. Women are also more likely to have a stroke at an older age than men, and they may have different symptoms, such as confusion, disorientation, and loss of consciousness. Men may experience more traditional symptoms, such as weakness or numbness on one side of the body. Maybe you have heard the saying before that women get sick and men die. Statistically, Women live on average six to seven years longer than men, but still women record higher levels of morbidity in both acute and chronic illnesses. Statistics also show that 60% of GP consultations involve women, and over 60% of hospital beds are occupied by women. Overall, genetics play a significant role in predisposing individuals to certain hereditary and degenerative diseases or conditions, while age and sex can influence susceptibility to various health problems. Genetic and biological factors are related to chromosome diseases, diabetes, atherosclerosis, arterial hypertension, ischemic heart disease, neoplastic disease, mental disorders, and many more. Genetic and biological factors statistically determine 18 to 22 percent of all health impairments. The second determinant of health is the lifestyle determinant. Lifestyle determinants of health are related to individual lifestyle choices, such as diet, salt intake, exercise, psychosocial stress, smoking, alcohol consumption, and drug use. These behaviors can have a direct impact on an individual's health and are therefore important factors to consider when examining health outcomes. Lifestyle factors are related to coronary heart disease, stroke, most neoplasms, injuries, obesity, chronic liver disease, and many more. Lifestyle factors are thought to play the greatest role in contributing to illness, with lifestyle factors determining 49-53% to 53 of all health impairments, while the other factors are of course crucial as well. Statistics show that 70-80% to 80 of all deaths in the developed and 40% of all deaths in developing countries can be related to lifestyle factors. This is especially important as with proper education and healthcare policies, many of these deaths could be avoided. In the next few sentences, I would like to go through a few important lifestyle factors 
and the respective recommendations by the WHO. How much exercise is recommended? The World Health Organization recommends that adults engage in at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity throughout the week or at least 75 minutes of vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity throughout one week. Additionally, muscle strengthening activities that involve all major muscle groups should be done at least two days per week. What is a healthy weight? The WHO recommends that adults maintain a healthy body weight by keeping their body mass index between 18.5 and 24.9 kg per square meter. BMI is a measure of body weight relative to height and is calculated by dividing a person's weight in kilograms by the square of their height in meters. How much salt intake is recommended? The WHO recommends a daily salt intake of less than 5 grams or less than 2000 milligrams of sodium for adults. This is equivalent to approximately 1 teaspoon of salt per day. However, many people consume far more than this recommended amount, which can increase their risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and other health problems. It is important to note that not all salt comes from the salt shaker. In fact, the majority of the salt in our diets comes from processed and packaged foods such as bread, cheese and canned soups. Therefore, it is important to read food labels and choose lower salt options whenever possible. How much alcohol intake is recommended? The recommended alcohol intake varies by country and organization, but generally it is recommended that adults consume alcohol in moderation. The WHO defines moderate alcohol consumption as up to two standard drinks per day for men and one standard drink per day for women. A standard drink is typically defined as 14 grams of pure alcohol, which is equivalent to 355 milliliters of beer with an alcohol content of 5%, 148 milliliters of wine with an alcohol content of 12%, or 44 milliliters of distilled spirits, such as vodka, gin, or whiskey, with an alcohol content of 40%. How much fruit and vegetables are recommended daily? The WHO recommends consuming at least 400 grams of fruits and vegetables per day as part of a healthy diet. This translates to about 5 servings of fruits and vegetables per day. It is recommended to consume a variety of fruits and vegetables in different colors to obtain a wide range of nutrients and phytochemicals. What advice can we give a patient to give up smoking? We can advise a patient to set a quit date, to identify triggers, to try a nicotine replacement therapy or different medications such as bupriyone and varinicycline, to seek support with friends, family or counselors, to stay active, avoid temptation and to be patient and persistent. The third determinant of health is the environmental determinant. Environmental determinants of health are related to physical and social factors in the environment that can influence health outcomes. Examples include exposure to toxins, air and soil pollution, and access to clean water and sanitation. Also risk factors from the working environment are included in this group. An important factor within the group of environmental factors is the socio-economic factors as income, social status, marital status, unemployment, education and housing and living conditions. A lower socioeconomic status has been linked to chronic stress, heart disease, ulcers, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, certain types of cancer and premature aging. Environmental factors statistically determine about 17 to 20% of all health impairments. 
An interesting example of the socioeconomic status on health, or better mortality in this case, was the comparison of mortality rates of passengers of different classes on the Titanic as it sunk in 1912 after colliding with an iceberg. You can see the diagram on the poster. And as you can see, women and children of the third class were much more likely to have died during the sinking of the Titanic than first and second class passengers. This example is so clear cut due to the strict division of the classes on the ship. A more recent and less clear cut example is the life expectancy by social class and gender in the UK, as shown in a study conducted between 2002 and 2005. In this diagram you can see that women of the highest social class had an average life expectancy of 85 years, while women of the lowest social class had a life expectancy of 80 years. Men of the highest social class had a life expectancy of 80 years, while men of the lowest social class had a life expectancy of 73 years. This shows the correlation of social class and overall health and the importance of promoting social equity and equal treatment of all patients, no matter their social status. How can low income affect health? Low income is unfortunately statistically connected to inadequate or unfit housing, lack of food and lower education. Also higher perceived stress levels and higher rates of health damaging behavior, such as exposure to occupational toxins and poor nutrition, were reported in low income groups within a population. The last determinant of health is healthcare services. Healthcare services determine the availability, timeliness and quality of medical treatments for the population, but also the individual. The quality of healthcare services determine how quickly a potential disease is diagnosed and appropriately treated. Another important factor of the healthcare service is the effectiveness of preventive interventions the coverage of the population with immunization programs, the providence of contraceptives and screening programs. In the healthcare services, we have to pay a special attention to vulnerable groups within the population, which include pregnant women, children, elderly and chronically ill patients. Statistics show that the healthcare service determined the least proportion of ill health with only accounting for 8-10% to of health impairments. All of these determinants of health interact with each other in complex ways, making it difficult to isolate any one factor as the sole cause of a particular health outcome. However, understanding these determinants is critical for developing effective strategies for improving public health. One of the key challenges in promoting health and preventing disease is addressing health inequalities. Health inequalities refer to differences in health outcomes between different groups of people, such as differences in life expectancy, disease prevalence and access to healthcare. These health inequalities are often the result of social and economic disparities that lead to unequal access to resources that are important for maintaining good health. For example, individuals living in poverty may lack access to healthy food options and safe environments for physical activity, which can lead to a higher risk of chronic diseases such as obesity and diabetes. Addressing health inequalities requires a comprehensive approach that takes into account the social determinants of health, such as income, education and access to healthcare. This can involve policies and programs aimed at reducing poverty, improving access to healthy food options and promoting physical activity and healthy lifestyles. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.